Also, very, oh, very interesting. Oh, there's, 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 yeah, okay, yeah. So thanks, Dean, for joining us also. Um, let me, uh, the agenda for today is a short presentation, hopefully less than half an hour, and then um, uh, we'll give you a walkthrough to the uh, Institute and um, uh, have a short conversation after that, get feedback from you, uh, discuss our bigger plan going ahead. So, um, uh, we call ourselves AI Institute of South Kenya, and this got started um, because the Dean's uh, initiative um, here is uh, Hossein's um, uh, proposal to uh, the President's Excellence Initiative um, in 2018 be um, ranked first on the evaluation among the proposals and um, um, I want to point out uh, a particular and salient feature of uh, what was uh, awarded. Uh, the center uh, will materialize conversion multidisciplinary activities across all USC colleagues and industry services in the state. And uh, from the very start, uh, <clears throat> Hussein, uh, supported by uh, Mike Humes and myself, um, thought of us as a uh, uh, campus-wide uh, you know, activity. Um, and I want to share with you how we achieved that. One of the distinct um, memory I have uh, before I came here is a, is a meeting that um, uh, Hussein had organized and he had invited the deans, uh, 10 deans showed up. Um, and uh, throughout the meeting, uh, certainly lasted more than an hour, if, I don't know whether it's one or two hours, but certainly more than one hour. Um, all that time was spent, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the deans telling them why they want AI. And I didn't do any selling whatsoever. So that really, um, you know, helped me make up my mind that this is a big opportunity, that there is a strong desire, uh, not just in a department or college, but across the university to uh, really have a significant activity um, in, 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 in AI. Um, and uh, my own work has always been highly translational, and uh, so I thought we can really build that kind of uh, organization here. Now these are the objectives that are gained from uh, right there from you know second page of Hossein's proposal, and we think we have <coughs> met all of them uh, in in our short time over uh, just over three uh, years. So I'm going to roughly deal with some of these, um, and uh, we, I'm prepared to discuss on any one of these at a lot more in lot more depth if there is desire and interest. <coughs> we started out with a, a small group, actually uh, six of my PhDs and postdoc. Um, coming here in um, 2019. So uh, fall 2019, these guys came over. And uh, in this uh, top left picture, there's also one intern and one of my uh, former PhD students so who uh, is at Samsung Research. He chose to take a three hour drive extra when he was in Atlanta to come here and spend a day with us. So that was the day on which I took that photo. And starting with that small group, we are now fairly significant, a uh, 40 uh, you know, member research group. And uh, that includes my uh, you know, five, four, four core faculty members, a couple of visiting or research faculty members, but all the students that we have recruited. Uh, um, so uh, this, is, this was into, uh, about midway uh, or size. Uh, and you can see Diplo had joined us. So this was after Diplo had joined us. You know, <coughs> she joined us. And then we, we are now. And uh, this is not even uh, the full community that we represent because we have uh, truly uh, large scale, uh, extensive collaborations across the campus. Uh, these are, this is a photograph at Retreat uh, that we just had in October. <coughs> so, um, I believe that this was the first university-wide AI institute in uh, southwestern US. And uh, we have well-funded core AI uh, research program, um, you know, and particularly we focus on the next phase of AI, it's called neurosymbolic AI, um, and uh, AI and explanation, explainable AI. Um, and 
we do present uh, national international leadership, I'll give you some examples of that. But we also have transdisciplinary and translational research in nearly all colleges at ESC. Uh, thing that always has been very important for me and that I'm so proud that we have here is the uh, student outcome. Uh, we already started demonstrating exceptional student outcome uh, in multiple ways, I will do that. So extensive industry and community engagement, even state engagement, Bipro just told me that election commission has um, uh, agreed to work with uh, his initiative. I will talk about many initiatives that we have uh, that is community-wide industry engaging and across the state. So <clears throat> in a very small, uh, um, in one picture, uh, we, we can say a lot of what this group does. There are a whole bunch of AI topics that you see in the uh, center of this slide. And what is very impressive is the uh, number of interdisciplinary topics uh, that we do. You can see colleges in each of these areas that, and we work with them. And uh, for an institute that's just three years, a uh, little over three years old, to be engaging in all of these um, applications, uh, I think uh, I, I would consider it to be outstanding if I was to say so myself. So um, I'll, I'll briefly talk about one or two of these uh, as we go along. This is just a, a list of all the colleges that we are uh, and the major groups that we are and the themes that we are working in. So you can see the semblance of you know majority of the colleges and all the variety of topics that we work with. Now you know we are at a stage of uh, continued growth. So we have already invested in. Uh, building uh, relationships and it is not at the level of simply talking to them or giving talks to them which we have done long time ago but it's actually getting the project started uh, and get aspire project funded uh, get small uh, r21 funded or something like that and then uh, on many of these things we are working towards major projects uh, and uh, some of them are uh, have been submitted uh, some uh, are in planning and will be submitted um, what is very impressive and what has been always important for me from the start is to find uh, uh, the right faculty and uh, you know develop the right ecosystem. I remember um, uh, at Rice State University where I had the largest uh, center in the history of that university. The thing that the president, the president had executive uh, in, and his executive team would always meet me uh, uh, every six months. So we used to have meeting with the president, vice president, every, you know, provost and everybody. And one thing he was most proud of was the quality of faculty that we were able to recruit there. I think we repeated that here. So um, you'll see here that our faculty are working on exciting research topics and um, the amount of effort that they are putting in writing proposal is very impressive, you'll see for all of them. And in short, such a short time, uh, you know, they have already made such connections across the campus, right? That is demonstrative of the, uh, you know, uh, investment we are making in making this campus wide afford. And I'm going the uh, most, uh, you know, youngest in terms of joining us, uh, the faculty who joined us last to the faculty, uh, you know, who joined us earlier. So there is this, after Christian Vignesh, see uh, ground activities, you can see collaborations. Chi Zhang, he has already won two NSF awards and more impending. Um, his awards are with uh, Dr. Chen there in civil environment engineering and more on the way. Uh, forest, uh, extensive. I remember in his first year with us, he made uh, eight or nine uh, you know, proposals. Um, and also has developed very extensive collaboration, um, as you can see here. Uh, and Diplo, uh, he, he was the first to join us and have very extensive activity. You see, also he has a very strong uh, engagement um, in terms of uh, with, with, with industry as well as um, on, across the state. Um, and uh, that's a little bit about you know me. So um, I have a lot of collaborations number of um, um, you know colleges and um, I think 
uh, here is a slide where you can, you know, just a summary of uh, in this shorter time, look at the number of proposals that we have been involving, um, the value as per uh, USERA, and uh, funding is such. What is more important here is that funding will come and more will come. But what is very important is that we fund all of our PhD students as graduate research assistants. So um, there is only half and half our PA in our more than 25 uh, students. All the rest are funded as GRA. And we probably have more work or more money coming in than we have the students to support. So that kind of um, rich uh, research environment that we have set up uh, is something that I think we can be proud of you funding in pipeline. Now we do have a very growing um, uh, list of industry partners and collaborators. They are, we have funding with some of them. Some of them have funded us. BMW had funded us. Um, uh, we have uh, funding from Bosch and Cisco uh, and uh, and, some, and, uh, and this is an incomplete um, a list uh, our students do internship at some of the top companies um, in the US and so there are a lot more of those one of the very um, exciting thing about um, uh, our PhD st our PhD student journey is that uh, uh, they off they would do three uh, internships uh, while uh, doing their PhD journey in summer internships and, and bring very rich experience many of them uh, they won fellowships and other kind of things. So the student exam excellence, um, I think we, I think probably the thing that we invest most time is in ensuring that our students are very successful. Well, we already graduated, um, you know, uh, a PhD student, and this is a caliber of the student that we have graduated, uh, as you can see for yourself. Uh, before you graduated, we had 40 publications, more than 1,000 citations before graduation. Uh, 20 plus tutorials in the talks. He organized workshops at top conferences. He had uh, three major uh, fellowships. Uh, there is a very prestigious Eric and Wendy Smith uh, fellowship. 900 plus applicants, 17 were selected. He was one of them. Another one that paid him $10,000 a month. So uh, he was guest editor of a special issue, best paper award. Uh, and he won actually a grant all by him, you know, his PI. Uh, my name was listed for, uh, you know, bureaucratic purpose, but it was all his support, and I gave him all the credit to actually win uh, a L.M. Turing Institute grant. And he joins a R1 university as a tenure track faculty. He had a 322K job offer from uh, Industry Research Lab. He was selected as AAAI 2003 new faculty, in his first year, the first six months, uh, and, and, and other things in short term, right? So that is the caliber of students that we are generating. Uh, I uh, I can challenge, uh, he would compete with, and he competed with the uh, products from the top 20, 20 universities. Now we have very extensive university and community engagement and outreach. I already mentioned that election commission thing, but it goes all across. So we have engagement with variety of uh, colleges and um, you know uh, centers and so on and so forth we participate in or advise variety of activities like sc companies farm format or ai curricular and uh, setting up the south Carolina ai curriculum uh, with richland too we have a very rich partnership uh, you know uh, I'll, I'll show you a couple of them but one of them includes that they went out and got the funding uh, to send uh, 20 of the students for summer school, uh, AI, summer AI camp at uh, AI Institute. In fact, the AI camp will be held right here. And they got funding for that already, right? And we are working on large proposal. Uh, I sponsored um, a team uh, of students from five uh, schools, and they won the regional competition also. So, and, and then we do variety of activities that have, uh, you know, that are DEI centric. Uh, uh, significant diversity and uh, as such, and uh, our kids are international footprint. <coughs> now, I wanted to um, uh, share with you the uh, future of AI and uh, at USC uh, and beyond uh, by just taking three uh, some examples. But th these three are the most robust, most well-developed ones. 
as to how we will uh, we intend to make uh, you know impact going forward. So they are in the personalized health area, uh, uh, education area, and uh, one of the areas of strength on our campus: cognitive science, neuroscience, um, and and such. So um, let me kind of give you the characteristics of these uh, things. So here. Uh, I uh, have listed a bunch of um, uh, you know AI capabilities that we bring, and a bunch of um, uh, use cases that we already work on. So, for example, uh, for each of them there is activity we have been doing preliminary work on asthma, but uh, in R01 is being submitted in the upcoming uh, you know in February um, uh, deadline. I think next next week in R01 gets submitted. Uh, with um, uh, you know a partner, medical partner uh, from the university. Um, uh, so she's Robin Dawson. Uh, diabetes we are working on. We are working on these uh, community disorders uh, and addiction and uh, precision nutrition. All of these involve active collaborations, and uh, <clears throat> they involve clinical assessment, self management of patients. Um, and uh, intervention and variety of other things. It's an area I call augmented personalized health. So while this gives you a big picture, it is founded on the base of actual ongoing uh, collaborations and partnerships that are going on. This is a subset of the uh, collaborations that we are uh, uh, that we have ongoing. Uh, you can see the title subject of the project, uh, participants, and the status. And um, my, my hope is to go after a. Uh, center grant uh, in this area. Uh, we um, are, uh, as we speak this week, we will be sending a primary, um, uh, primary uh, white paper uh, to um, for a P41 uh, grant uh, that's jointly with UCI uh, and Stanford. So um, uh, that's one area. Second area is education, and um, there are. Again, a whole number of activities are going on. Uh, Forest here uh, and Wicklow and others are working on uh, weak tubes uh, uh, and uh, you know, AI teaches how to solve weak tubes based on user explainability. And um, they have a proposal uh, that involves uh, college student subjects. Uh, um, I have, uh, you know, the dean of college was here recently talking with me on variety of issues, including chat GPT, and Wicklow had gone and given a uh, talk at College of Law, all those matters. I am working on a very exciting uh, you know, project uh, along with one of our research faculty or two of our research faculty uh, that involves um, College of Arts and Science, Geosciences, College of Education, and Regional Scholarly School District 2, where you can see the title, it is um, uh, developing analogy-based uh, learning. And this will involve um, at, the, at least there's a proposal in preparation with uh, about five million dollar in um, budget will be submitted later in this year, and uh, it requires we are doing preliminary with right, with right now surveys and such, and um, it will involve uh, teaching earth science uh, at high school uh, using the, this AI enabled analogy based education, and we have. Um, uh, you know, Bank of America, uh, uh, you know, negotiate, discussing with us a statement of work for them to fund also in this area for retraining of their uh, employees. And we can also, we are working towards more comprehensive AI education across the campus. So uh, we completed AI certification with many new AI courses So this faculty. Uh, it's relatively small faculty, but uh, they all introduce uh, courses or are teaching courses that were not taught for a while. And uh, now uh, we are in the process of um, setting up professional masters in, in this interdisciplinary AI. So this will allow students who don't have computer science bachelors uh, to start, uh, you know, to, to engage with us. And uh, uh, the dean uh, is very um, interested in getting this initiative started. And uh, uh, I, you know, <coughs> my colleague Christian is coordinating uh, or helping, you know, working with me to really. Uh, get this thing out, and um, but it's making becoming possible because all these faculty have brought in the courses that will make that possible, and that uh, you know I think we'll be able to scale um, 
the course, the course that may be taken by 10 students will be taken by hopefully 40 students or uh, 80 students. Uh, so significantly improve the re revenue from the uh, courses that we teach. And it may involve hiring uh, a non tenured track faculty also. And then I would like to, I have done an NRT proposal, uh, was in front of it, but uh, there uh, we had proposed a, you know, to broad um, uh, participation from uh, other departments uh, or colleges uh, where such a program such that non-CS uh, students can start getting, uh, you know, getting to the AI uh, degree program uh, and, and significant training there. Uh, so uh, that is, uh, what I wanted to convey, convey in the short period, how well did I did in time? Oh, okay, I did in time, relatively, actually less than three minutes. Uh, so uh, with that, um, any question, any thoughts you have? We'll talk more later on, you know, on Maureen, but, but um, anything you would like to ask our students or faculty? So uh, I wasn't prepared, but, um so it is a really interesting area, an area AI that covers really the entire institution and an area that we need to be at the forefront of. Um, you know, we're dealing in the provost office now with chat GPT and how we're gonna handle that among students. So I mean, that's just the first foray into how, how AI is going to fundamentally change how we educate and train students. But I'm curious to think through how um, how we could use some of these innovations in AI to actually change the way we teach and create ways to get our students to think critically. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we had uh, filled, the, I filled uh, three interviews, uh, requests from the students or others uh, from the campus on chat GPT and my colleagues have also. So uh, that's just one. So the interesting thing is that um, we started, um, uh, this initiative in 2018, uh, proposal 2019, we started this institute. In a way, we had um, um, a sort of advantage. Not that I would be we the first AI center institute in the world, but um, at the university level, uh, certainly in Southeast, we had the more advantage. Um, suddenly, AI, um, um, and AI was already relatively hot topic and a new, new demand topic in the industry. With what's happening in the last, uh, in this last year, um, it's going to next, it has gone to the next year already. So um, the, the, um, everybody uses search, and, you know, and, and that has AI in it. But now with this next generation of systems that are coming in, uh, it's just not going to be changed if there'll be a lot of things of that nature. We ourselves have developed uh, multiple um, chatbots uh, maybe five or six or seven, and uh, they cover many uh, areas. Uh, in fact, uh, within a week, uh, exactly a week from today, no, less than a week from today, uh, at the largest conference on AI, uh, these students will present uh, uh, two demos. Um, one of them happens to be a chatbot on mental health. And it, uh, it has uh, many advanced features uh, that we think that are, are very exciting, such as safety, in case of medical engagement mm -hmm. uh, that we address. Um, other address explainability that Chad GPT can't explain how it got what it got. And we work on uh, explaining it with the, it, 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 it uh, goes along, you know, uh, several of them. Forrest's work, there is explainability. Wipper's work, there is explainability. Um, and the work that, uh, you know, Vignesh Krishnan I do also involves explainability and as such. So um, we, have, we, we have some very unique things to uh, offer. But yeah, now students, a lot more students will explicitly know that they are using AI and they are going to use AI in a lot more substantially. I mean, chat creativity can help, uh, chat GPT kind of pieces can help with creative aspects, can make a big impact on literature and uh, liberal uh, arts, uh, arts education and so on and so forth. So, uh, it's just going to grow all across in all of the areas. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to make a quick comment here that uh, while this is very exciting from my uh, point of view, uh, we also need to be very cognizant of the fact that things can go wrong, okay? And um, 
whenever technology is being put out, right? Like, uh, so ChatGPT is very much like calculator. Scientific calculator came in, and the whole education system was uh, upset. So uh, we need to be, have this uh, spirit of experimentation and be able to evaluate and take corrective action. So there's a little bit about the culture we have in the university, which we need to improve. Uh, experimentation culture. Mm -hmm. So it's not that, you know, uh, this has been tested five times and it will not make a mistake. This is software. Most of the software, the Google search and all, they keep failing all the time and they're improving. Okay. But that kind of culture of failing, right, is not tolerated in business and definitely not in university. So what we need is a supportive culture as we put technology and education and all in. We need to tighten our evaluation, of course, from technology point of view but also in adoption. So, so we, we need to be, and I'm not saying that we are not, but I'm just saying that we need to change our culture also, our expectation from technology and mechanism by which we can improve. So uh, one student got a wrong answer from the tool, right? Doesn't mean that kill the tool. So that's all yeah. I wanted to say. That's a big risk. Well, and you know what, what you brought forward about mental health, I could see that, like if you make a mistake there and the liability if someone were to injure themselves. How how do you how do you adapt to that? Right. In fact, uh, in, in so that we um, our effort is not just a academic exercise. This is in collaboration with Mira, Nasim Han, and uh, and practicing clinicians. So we are not doing something inventing in computer science or AI. I figured that. And uh, and that involves um, and I have a colleague who's uh, sick. Uh, she is not shown up here. Valerie Shalin. Uh, but uh, we have access to large clinical psychology program uh, and students uh, who will be involved in the evaluations um, and followed by patient evaluations. And uh, a uniqueness of our technology is to put the guard rate. So to uh, make sure that our uh, chatbot can uh, discuss uh, anxiety and depression but will not go to uh, discuss uh, schizophrenia and, um, uh, and suicidal, so, uh, suicidality. And it will have the glass breaking kind of options also available uh, for that. So the, these are the things that uh, we are working on. Um, uh, these are unique to our own research actually. Uh, and, and we gave a tutorial at Influence Conference on this topic and the students by the way led that kind of activity. Uh, you want to add something? Oh, I wanted to just add about AI communication. Sitwan and I are working on this one. I had student education and explainable AI. And we look at it not just as AI telling you a solution, but rather collaborating with you, building on your own ideas to solve the problem in a way that you're interested in or that you can understand. And so if we're successful with the Rubik's Cube, we want to extend this to mathematics as well as to chemistry. And so we see this as a way that we can have personalized extracurricular learning opportunities. And so students can learn in ways that um, are helpful to their own learning styles and their own interests. And they new kinds of solutions that maybe weren't presented in class or aren't in their textbooks. All right. Um, any, any other comments, any students, anyone wants to ask anything here before we um, give them a tour of our place? Have you thought about a bachelor's program, or is it too advanced when you're sending in math and computing skills? No, uh, we, we can certainly think about bachelor's program. Uh, uh, it's a question of uh, resources. So we are, um, as you, in some sense, um, um, Four uh, are primarily set up as a research institute, uh, going beyond our core, uh, you know, mandate to, uh, you know, given the interest uh, to really make impact in education. Um, I feel that uh, if you go to the professional masters, that itself is going to expand <coughs> the scope quite a bit. Uh, we do have bachelors involved here, so the interns. Um, uh, in fact, here's an interesting thing that reminds me. Recently, my colleague, um, you know, research faculty Amitava, uh, you know, and I, we set up a. Um, uh, uh, we announced that we can accept uh, applicants, uh, internship applicants. In one week, 527 wow. applied. Wow. When we closed the thing, and um, so there are several um, you know, interns when they are hired. Um, uh, they are online, so there is, you know, uh, Vishal there, there is uh, Vedan there, there is Deepa there, and there's some more. They did online internship, then they came here as a 
uh, as intern on site and they applied to join us in a PhD program. So, and that's, you know, uh, recently uh, I also in this room held a meeting for our first generation students. And um, they were very engaged. They, I gave them a, a presentation like this and such, very engaged. And I, one of them, you know, came back and uh, has already started working with us uh, as a paid uh, uh, student programmer and um, uh, is engaged. So we are engaging undergrads, even we have had a couple of high school interns um, working with us. So that is going, but as, a, as doing a program, um, uh, if you're willing to uh, discuss the resources and ability to do that, we'll be happy to give leadership. But it, it's a matter of uh, that right now, clearly um, we have a lot to offer on research and we are, this research will be very significant contribution for us in education. Um, and educating these, you know, top, uh, you know, tier students is, is really something we are, hands are quite full. So we have our VPR here. I'll put him on the spot now. So, so what excites you, you students in the room, not faculty, excites you most about the potential of your AI work? So how are you going to measure that impact? So how many cases we are able to uh, predict? This is the one impact. And let's say uh, we have like 90% of uh, patients which are coming to the clinics and the time consuming in that so one thing is that the less time we do in like online AI applications, it will just reduce the time. And also uh, earlier, earlier like machine learning applications, which were not able to detect the properly, the like the phrases which we detect in the AI, like in the mental health. So that also now, now the technologies which, are, which we are working on, they are able to predict those phases properly with the help of knowledge and deep learning. If I can make a comment as a faculty yeah. on this thing. This is a very good question and a very pertinent question for the whole research community. There are broadly two approaches beyond the technical evaluation which uh, Deepa was mentioning and Vipla was mentioning. Uh, one of them is having focus groups. And we are, for example, in a chatbot we are building for election with senior citizens, we are having focus groups at senior citizen centers. So that's one way. The second one, and that's where uh, there's some interest from the South Carolina Election Commission. The second one. What are you studying in? How the official information put up by the Election Commission mm -hmm. is understood by people. Ah, Do people understand okay. it, right? We have all kinds of fake news, but even the official news, are we able to spread that? So that's the thing. We are flipping the problem. The second one, if type of evaluation, so one is focus group. The second one is what is called randomized control trial or AB studies, which is very common in public health and others, but it's surprising that that's not done in the area of chatbots and so on. So in fact, we, thanks to the VPR, we got a proposal uh, accepted where we are looking at how faculty can team up based on you know the data, public data, and call for proposal. So we have a prototype, but we want to subject our own faculty at a college level right first. Can the technology with or without do it? Now doing a RCT is extremely hard. So just a vaccine trials are very hard, but <laughs> subjects, human subjects are doing it and pulling it off is very hard. So evaluation is actually a very important research pillar for the lab year. So I don't say that we have solved it, but uh, thanks to your support and what we are working on, right, we have the opportunity of experimenting in the real world. So I think that's the exciting part. Any other questions? I'd just like to add, uh, so my work, uh, along with a, a, a lot of collaborators, is primarily in, in the mental health chatbots. 
And I happen to be in the unique position to not only understand that on a technical level, but I'm myself actively involved in uh, the mental health community at the school. So uh, I float these ideas around, and I know the impact that they make at the ground level. And uh, also, uh, due to that, um, it improves my research outcome when uh, there have been interviews by students and media um, interest in um, how this impacts the school, at least locally. And uh, if I may say so myself, from that I gather that it's quite impactful. Yeah, what is it? Kind of puts us uh, at an advantageous position. Compared to One of the unique things uh, of our uh, you know, uh, ecosystem is that, uh, exemplified by Putkashni, um, she works closely with uh, Robin Dawson. And you know, I can only spend so much in. Uh, so she manages the relationship with Robin that has been critical in our R01 technical setting this week. So um, they get, I really mentioned my school had won a, um, a grant by itself. They get really engaged in this relationship. I have another school, Usha, who works with the ABC project. Uh, and there, uh, in the ABC project, a uh, patient comes in and they are evaluated for two days, essential clinical. Uh, you know, personal involvement in collecting their data and, and, and coding it up, the clinical assessment that they do, and come up with, let's say, MOCA score uh, for cognitive, uh, you know, decline and such. So we are working on developing the uh, techniques and tools for doing this largely automatically. Uh, that will save a lot of time. So clinical assessment that takes uh, many hours uh, will be done, plus come do it so with explainability, so we can explain exactly how we came in this course and such. Uh, we're doing the same thing with autism, we're doing the same thing with several other disease. So um, the students are engaged in the process, and they uh, work with uh, Julius's team uh, substantially, and there is uh, a weekly meetings, or uh, you know, Deepa is doing it with uh, uh, the Institute of Mind and Brain, and Ken, the, uh, in an autism institution, and so on and so forth. So all these schools actually get engaged uh, and maintain these interdisciplinary relationships, uh, see how the technology gets actually applied. Um, they're not expert on the domain, but they become really uh, very good at managing these relationships and really mature them as also as, as researchers before they get the degrees here. Some of them are similarly engaged with, uh, some of schools are working with the industry partners. Similarly, in very substantial ways. Okay, th yeah. Another just a couple of comments. I'm really sorry that I came in late. I was supposed to be accompanying uh, Pro, uh, Pro Star and Adam. Um, I unfortunately have to leave again for another meeting. I look at your group and I think potential. There's enormous potential. Um, what I would encourage you to do is to figure out what is it that makes you as a group or subgroup special. So what is your identity? Are you, are you working to advance AI techniques, so domain generally? Are there niche areas where you have carved out something specific and as a group, 
you can be nationally competitive, not just for publications in top-notch journals, but also going for large grants. So that's where I think, think about where are you gonna be in two years? Where are you gonna be in five years? You gotta have that vision and then just go for it. So what are the areas of collective strength that you have right now? So you guys, I presented some of these ideas. Uh, here, for example, are on personalized health, uh, classroom education, and cognitive science, neuroscience. And I discussed, uh, for example, here is a blueprint. Uh, we didn't get funded for the presidency issue, but we'll see go. Uh, as we speak, we are submitting a, uh, with uh, UCI and Stanford, a P41 uh, you know, uh, uh, white paper shortly. And um, there's a state initiative uh, going on in this area. And uh, what the way we do is that we develop broad related partnership. To me, all of these collaborations yep. are likely to fit into as projects into a key grant. How many faculty members do we have? Four. Five. Five. So you've got to be thinking in your collaboration with the huge team of students that you have, what are the areas that you can go for as the leaders, not some other institution? you got to be thinking how are we gonna get there? If we're not there right now, what are the things that we need to put in place to let's say that two years from now, we go for a program project? If you, the amount of funding, for example, from the National Institute of Health is only gonna keep on increasing. In 2015, it was 32 billion. This year, it will probably be 48 billion. The amount of money available for research is only going to keep on increasing. You have enormous potential. I've heard a couple of people talk about research in the health space. If that's where you're going, figure out what is your niche. Don't do something that everybody else is doing. Figure out what is it that makes you special. And um, then go for that. Yes, yeah, so I did also, uh, we have some uh, areas which we need bigger. So uh, our, we, have, we made AI Institute proposal with uh, 56 partners <coughs> in the institute. So we do have uh, some of these areas packed up and we are working on them. You are totally right. That yep. There's only this size, so we have to know our expertise. But even those from outside who came to us as partners, they're also looking for the areas in which we think we are the leaders. <coughs> yeah, you got to, the size of the group doesn't have to be all of you. It could just be but a group of three folks who are leaders in whatever complementary skills that you have is what you need to be competitive, for example, for a program project. You don't need a team of 20 professors. As a matter of fact, I would think that most grant proposals that you will go to go for with a team of 20 professors is probably way too broad. It's probably way too broad. You need to figure out what is your lane and go from that. Make sense? I gotta run. I'm sh I'm sorry. I mean, I have another meeting coming up. I'm always open to chat with you. Also, students, if you want to come and talk to me, I can talk about this stuff forever. Not about AI, <laughs> but about how to advance your research and make an impact. The other thing before I leave, I would be thinking, what are the problems of this state that you can help solve? you're in that space, you can sort of have a double whammy because now it's not just federal funding that you can go for, there's also state funding. All right, I'm sorry I have to run. Thank okay, you. Okay guys, thank you. I'll uh, thank you. You know, take five minutes with uh, the post now if you have anything else to. Thank you. <coughs> I have a lot of RCC.